You just gotta have a little faith. This is a pretty short story. I was playing as a chaotic good barbarian who was, well, chaotic good for friends and bystanders. He was a very helpful, friendly, and supportive person, but in the fight, you know, he was the type that liked to see his enemies suffer. He killed them in brutal ways, liked to beat the crap out of captives that didn't want to cooperate. You know, the usual stuff. But he was only like this towards bad people. Well, apparently that was enough for one of the players who, without talking to me, behind my back, went to talk to the dungeon master, and they together decided that my character will be chaotic evil from that moment, completely ignoring the fact that this character spends most of his life helping others and doing all the good things. Nope, apparently doing bad things to a few people makes me evil. I personally do not care much for it. I was still playing my character as usual, but suddenly the whole world around my character changed. Every NPC was not trusting my characters, and some of the most important NPCs, like a paladin's guild, didn't want to talk to me because I was evil, etc. After a while, it got really annoying, so I decided that if that one player and DM were so sensitive about my character being evil, I will show them an evil character. I just flipped my character's personality to be the chaotic evil dude that everyone saw him as. The next four sessions were pretty chaotic, full of stealing, treating people, treating pe- oh, he probably means torch, brutally killing, etc. You name it. After four sessions, the DM and the player approached me and asked me to stop. I told them I cannot. After all, I am evil, so I do evil stuff, and I would gladly stop if I wasn't evil. After that conversation, I finally got my chaotic good status back, and magically, all the NPCs started to act normally towards my character. I turned my character's personality back to normal, but that one player was clearly unhappy about it. TLDR, DM and player decide I'm evil, and they regret it soon after. Did they stand up and clap too? The last bit of the story is a bit too self-aggrandizing for my taste. However, I must say, I do believe the first bit, if only because the plain stupidity of, I brutally kill people, but I'm still a good guy at heart. It's just a little too stupid to be fake. You know what I mean? Hi, I recently discovered your channel and found that I could relate certain parts of the shared stories to my own most recent experience. This is going to be very, very long, so I apologize in advance. I'm also going to be omitting some details because the main problem player in this story is related to me, and if she ever finds out I shared this, I'll be in big trouble. Also, I'd like to state that I'm well aware that I probably have not handled everything perfectly, and I'm not at all absolved of anything I may have done to contribute to the situation. But as you'll see later on, I think I really was just trying my best. Participants in the story are as follows. Rogue is myself. The DM is a long-suffering only dude in the group until wizard, fighter, warlock joined. Sorcerer, the main problem player. Barbarian, a sweetheart who puts her heart and soul into everything. Bard is our secondary problem player. Druid is an in real life friend of Sorcerer who has a very minor to neutral role and didn't join until later. Wizard, Fighter, Warlock are in real life friends of the DM who joined later on and has a role in the incident and a bit of a problem player as well. I just realized those aren't three separate people. They're all one dude. Uh, anyway, Guy Friend is not part of the D&D group, but he plays a significant role in the incident, so I'm including him. To start out, allow me to explain a few things. Aside from the DM and myself, and later Wiz Philock, everyone in this campaign is a first time player. I was really excited to share my favorite hobby with these people. I had known Sorcerer my whole life, considering we were related, and had known Bard and Barbarian for a little over a year. We knew the Dungeon Master for a few months, but he and I got along really well, really fast. The campaign we were playing was a homebrew world created by the DM, so communication with him about my character is something I made the utmost priority to make sure it worked with his world and his story. I was also playing a homebrew race, so we had a lot of discussion about how it would fit into his world and we worked together a lot to build their society and why they were outcasts in exile and hiding. 
This will be important later on. Now, I will cut everyone some slack at the beginning for not giving him as much backstory and communicating as much because, you know, they're new. That's understandable. But as time went on, it became frustrating as both the DM and myself offered to help and we were, in most cases, not taken up on that. But here's the main problems with the problem player before I proceed to the incident. Lack of communication. As mentioned earlier, most of the other players did not communicate much with the DM about their backstories from the start. When Sorcerer finally did share backstory, it was with the whole group in our server through a series of drawings she had done. The backstory included being the only sorcerer in a village full of bards, and she was bullied for it? Okay, and later accidentally burning the whole village to the ground before later being kidnapped and enslaved by a king who was extremely racist towards elves. This was a bit of a problem because one, the DM was not comfortable with playing out such a character and she hadn't checked with him if it was okay first and two, she hadn't checked out the city the king was in charge of and it happened to be, according to legend, the birthplace of magic and everything was pretty much done by magic there. Elves are some of the most inherently magical races in the world of D&D, so it made zero sense to have a king who was the leader of a super magic city be racist towards a large chunk of his population. I mean, comment withheld. Her character later escaped enslavement by accidentally burning the king when he was upset with Bard for insulting him. They both naturally became wanted there. This information, along with lots of other information, was not discussed with the DM, and he was frustrated that he might have to redesign a lot of his lore just to fit this backstory. He ended up killing off the king just so he wouldn't have to RP as him. Next up, victimization. Both in her backstory and in game, Sorcerer made herself the victim at every opportunity. It was like she had to desperately convince everyone that she wasn't in the wrong for, you know, murdering her whole village by accident, and she just had to be so traumatized in order to be interesting or something. It was super annoying because she would try and make things that were about other characters. She would try and make them about her too. She had this stupid trait like, I'm really attractive, but I think I'm ugly, or I'm the only person in the village with ombre hair, or like I mentioned earlier, I was the only sorcerer in the village of bards. Despite the fact that nobody is like bored a bard, you have to go to like bard college for a reason. Honey, there's something wrong with our baby. What's wrong? Oh. Well, I mean, he's, he's he's pretty good. He's two months old. Main character syndrome. She did everything she could to make things about herself. She would try and make herself relevant to everyone else's backstories, even claiming that the library of the palace she had been held in had a historical book about my character's race that was completely blank. I asked the DM about this, and he said he, you know, did not prove that. It also made no sense, because my character's race had a history of religious persecution, had hidden themselves away from society, and those who hated them did their best to erase all memory of them. So wouldn't it make sense the book would be blank? The real question is, why on earth would you have a blank history book? Also, a lack of self-awareness. She once asked me if my character was the main character, and complained that I talked too much. Look. I just engage with the story. Should I hold back a bit? Yeah, maybe, but look, I'm not trying to say I'm without fault, but if there's something that's open for anyone to engage with and nobody says anything, I'm not just gonna sit there in awkward silence. I'm, I'm gonna play the game. My character's personality is also very much a get things done type who doesn't like to wait around. She means business. Ah, shipping. The DM introduced a DM NPC in session 2 that was a cleric because we didn't have a healer and he wanted to help out the new players as they learned to play. He was never meant to be a permanent character, however, he had witnessed that we were all very suspicious of outsiders, so he had the NPC express mild interest in something connected with Sorcerer's character to gain her trust. She immediately started having her character crush on him and ship them. I don't think the DM had a problem with this at first, but later I think he felt like it was getting out of hand. There was later an NPC that my character had a bit of a thing with, so I don't think he disliked romance in general, just the way that she went from zero to a hundred so quickly. Attention hog. She will do anything to place the attention on herself, including a 10 minute irrelevant conversation with Wiz Philoc that happened multiple times a session and slowed things down. I'll admit, there have been times where I've had long conversations, but I tried to keep them focused on the plot. 
she would also seem to act upset when things didn't focus on her enough, despite the fact that there's been lots on her character. And at the time, we had yet to even touch on Barbarian's backstory, and she was taken in stride. Trauma. I get that trauma is a reality, but when every big thing gives your character trauma, then maybe your character is not fit to be an adventurer. Bard also had this problem, it was even more so than Sorcerer. Unprepared. They would take forever in combat because she didn't understand her spells and it would take too long trying to decide. She got a bit better at this later on, but both Bard and Druid struggled. The spellcasting can be really tricky, especially for first time players. Okay, get ready for a mid-story break. So it looks like we've got a couple of things combining to form our problem player here. First and foremost is main character syndrome, spotlight hogging, that sort of thing, trying to direct the story towards herself and her own story. On top of that, you got lack of communication, not talking to the DM, which really, really clashes with that whole spotlight thing. You want the story to focus around you, but at the same time, you're not communicating with the guy who's building the context of the story. And then finally, a bit of not like other girls stuff thrown in there with the character herself. I don't know if the player is like that, but... Dang, it's a gnarly combo. Top all this with this person being a new player, and yeah, you got a rough situation. Alright, let's figure out what this incident is. On to the incident. It started when the DM decided to invite his in real life friend, Wiz Phylock. Might just call him multi-classer. Nope, we, we've dedicated. I've mispronounced this a thousand times, and I'm dedicated now. Anyway, yeah, was Phylock joined the campaign. The DM was tired of being the only guy, and a part of me suspects he wants someone he knew better because he still felt somewhat like an outsider. I had heard some things about Wiz Phylock and was a bit surprised he wanted to include him, but I wanted to be supportive, so I told him I was okay with it. Besides, the sorcerer could invite Druid without really asking us, then surely the DM could invite a new player himself, leading up to Wiz Phylock's first session with us. The DM was really anxious. I told him that if things went bad, he could always kick him. First session with him was mostly combat, so it wasn't too bad at first, but everyone else immediately loved his character, who was this super deprecating noble on the run. I found him kind of funny at first, but he quickly got annoying with the way conversation with him tended to go in circles because he saw himself as literally lower than anyone else and insisted he be the party's servant. My character awoke at the beginning of the next session in the middle of the night due to her passive perception noticing him trying to take her sword to clean it. Anyway, we were infiltrating the noble house of Wiz Phylock's character for information. While Wiz Phylock, Sorcerer, and Fighter, DMPC, were trying to gather information from the lord of the house, Druid and I were pulling off a heist on their family vault. Bard and Barbarian were looking for information on other things in the city, which was also the super magical city from earlier. That's also important. Turns out, the whole thing was a setup, and the new king, who was unaware of his father's apparent racist behavior and abuse towards Sorcerer, was trying to capture Sorcerer for revenge, which is kind of understandable if you think someone just randomly killed your dad. Druid and I heard the commotion and tried to escape, but my stealth check was the only one high enough not to get caught. I had a choice to make. I could either escape and make it out with what I had, or I could attempt to negotiate for their release. I believed in character development, so despite having no real reason to because no one else really seemed to care about my character, I decided to try and negotiate. I threatened this king, bargained with the king, I even made it clear I was willing to use some very powerful and dangerous magical items if it came down to it. Both Sorcerer and Bard told me to shut up a couple of times out of game because I was endangering the characters. Finally, Wiz Phylock threw out some insults in character, pretending to betray us. He referred to the king as the city's rogue king, and called my character an idiot. This was a bit hurtful, but it was roleplay, so, you know, I didn't mind. I figured he understood my character well enough to know what would get to her, especially because my character was never a citizen of that city, nor did she live there. Her whole goal was to find and release her people's good king, blah, 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 blah. After the session, however, people kept praising Multiclasser for his... Good insults? Look. Dang, I burned my friends, but no one ever compliments me for it. I kind of rolled my eyes, but I didn't say anything, even though I knew if it had been the other way around, people would have been angry at me for saying that sort of thing. Wiz Phylock then declared that he hadn't said anything that wasn't true, and I had to interject. I mean, you said that this person was her king, and he's not. My character's never lived there, and she isn't his subject, and also, she's not stupid. She has one of the highest intelligence scores of the group. I went to our DM with my concerns because I felt that if I tried to talk to them myself, they would tell me it wasn't a big deal and to calm down. 
My DM decided that since he felt responsible for making sure his players were comfortable and respected in his game, he would talk to them and express that he wasn't okay with them telling me to shut up or being so rude to me. I later got an apology accompanied by a long excuse from Sorcerer, but I didn't hear from Bard. The DM later informed me that Wiz Vylock had tried to shift the blame, and when DM suggested that he leaves the group, he agreed. Against DM's advice, Wiz Vylock told Sorcerer first, because they were still dating. They're together? I mean, it wouldn't be the first time I missed that kind of thing. I mean, I didn't realize that Lester from The Wire was getting with Shardeen until they were married. So what do I know? Anyway, look, she was going on a full emotional breakdown where she ghosts everyone, which is not a surprise. She's done this several times before in the past years. I try and stay out of it because I don't need that drama. Until about a day or two later, where she makes a group chat with everyone except Multiclasser and the DM, plus someone who isn't even in our D&D group. Guy friend. I told you he'd be relevant. I assume she included him because he's pretty good at giving advice and also her best friend that usually sides with her in most instances. Sorcerer started the conversation asking all of us that if someone in the group felt unwelcome, would we try our best to fix it and convince them not to leave? This was clearly an attempt to guilt trip us, and I couldn't just not respond, so I messaged the DM to tell him about the situation, so at least he was aware of it. Returning to the group chat, I said, So if I felt unwelcome, would you guys do everything you could to fix it? Bard was like, Of course! So I told them the way they had treated me by telling me to shut up the last session made me feel extremely unwelcome. Especially because earlier in the campaign, I had shared time in another group where I was also told to shut up when I tried to roleplay. And they all promised me this new group would never do that to me. Bard apologized and asked why I hadn't said something sooner, and I expressed that I hadn't felt like I could. I then decided that now was a good time, at least as good as time as any, to express that we all need to do a better job at being supportive of each other and our characters. I know this sounds super out of nowhere, but I swear it was relevant, it's just difficult to explain in this format. I never once targeted anyone or said any names, I said we all need to be better. Which, yeah, that included me. Source replied by making it personal though, calling me selfish, saying I didn't really care, that nobody asked my character to prioritize their characters, and that I didn't have to play with them if I didn't want to. I said, and this is exactly why I didn't say anything. I repeatedly brought up that the DM should be included in this conversation, and that felt pretty unwelcome to exclude him. But Sorcerer claimed that she always felt judged and hated by the Dungeon Master, and refused to include him. If this conversation was about making Wiz Philoc feel unwelcome, why were her feelings dictating who was included? When Guyfriend joined the conversation, he assessed things and started trying to mediate the conversation. He asked some questions about what happened from my side of things, which eventually led to me explaining being told to shut up. Sorcerer said I should have talked to them personally about how I was treated, instead of having the DM make me feel bad. I explained I hadn't asked the DM to do that. He had decided to do it because he was looking out for his players. Sorcerer then said, looking out for his play -er, implying favoritism and saying that I was a DM's pet of sorts, I guess? Guy friend got pissed at her and said that wasn't okay, and then said nobody was allowed to say anything until he got back from doing errands and would guide the conversation. You know, obviously I like Dungeons and Dragons, but I don't think this guy knows anything about it. And I just want to say, if I ever get dragged into my friend's random drama involving, I don't know, basketball, um, no, I'm dead inside. Hey guys, um, what seems to be the problem? He messaged me privately and made sure I was okay with answering certain questions, which I agreed to. I also thanked him for having my back and defending me, to which he said, Of course, I don't like it when people are bullied for trying their best. I started tearing up because I realized that I really had been just trying my best, even if I wasn't perfect, and it was a relief to hear it said by someone who had an outside perspective. I had been genuinely worried at some points in the campaign that I was the selfish one in the wrong. The whole thing is kind of a blur after that, but at some point, Sorcerer claimed that she did share stuff with the Dungeon Master and that he just never responded, which Guy Friend said was unfair. I asked DM about this and he said that maybe there was one time where he forgot to respond because he had other stuff going on, and said he apologized later for not getting back to her, but, but yeah, once probably feels like a lot when she had only communicated about two or three things regarding her backstory. 
The next day, I got a message from Wiz Filoc asking if we could talk. I was anxious and asked why, and he said he just wanted to discuss the situation and communicate. I respected his desire to have clear communication because it was more than some people could say, and I agreed. When I got on the call, I was so nervous, but he was mainly calling to ask me how I was doing because he figured I had probably been under the most fire from what he heard from Sorcerer. He explained how he was leaving the campaign and that he didn't want to take anyone down with him, so his official reason was that it was just time to be done and that it was nobody's decision but his own. He wanted to make sure there was no hard feelings between us and talked a bit about what happened. At the end of the day, mad respect for the way he handled things in the end there, even if I I didn't like the way he played his character or treated me. Once he told Sorcerer, however, she left every single group chat, we have a billion of them, except for the D&D server because the DM said if anyone just up and left again, yes, again, then they would not be invited back. So she left every chat that didn't have consequences. She also deleted every single one of her posts on Instagram, her art account, and went completely radio silent. Bard quickly followed her to leave, DM, Barbarian, and myself were all really annoyed and pissed off at her behavior. Things are slowly resolving, and the DM is planning to have a talk with Sorcerer about her behavior before our next session on Saturday. It's been weeks since we left off. Sorcerer has come back to chats and has since broken up with the poor <laughs> multi-classer guy. And she's been doing some randomly nice things for me while trying to act like everything is normal. I've gone back and forth on whether or not she's just trying to appease me, and I don't know whether or not I'm gaslighting myself into thinking she's sincere or being too judgmental in thinking she's doing this intentionally. Anyways, there's probably plenty of minor things that I missed, but this tells the story well enough and it's already super duper long. I apologize for such a long read, but I couldn't just cut a lot of this out. Thanks for reading. I hope you and others enjoyed this insanity. If there's an update, I'll be sure to send it. TLDR, problem player makes yourself the victim of every situation, and it causes major issues for everyone. I'm just trying to have a good time and look out for the DM, who has put a lot of work into this. Lots of problems would be solved if everyone felt like they could express their feelings without being the bad guy. It's not really a good way to summarize all this. Whew, the longest read we've had in a long time. Look, in the end, here is the main lesson that I took away from this. Don't let things just boil over. The incident, the big thing here, is honestly not that big of a deal. It's just a conflict that arose from an in-game roleplay moment that caused friction out of game. The insults resulting in some character bleed. You know, you're insulting the character, but it's kind of bleeding into the person and makes them feel bad. This happens sometimes, you know, you think you're making jabs at a person or their character, and you take it a bit too far. It's unfortunate, but it's not unheard of. Now, the main person who is actually doing these insults, the multi-classing, Wiz Philoc, he actually apologized and handled the situation really well. What's interesting is that person that was removed from the situation, the sorcerer, she was the one that caused the most friction after the event. However, that kind of falls in line. We've all met that kind of person who makes everything about themselves. Every conversation, every event, every piece of drama. And while many of us like observing drama from a respectable distance, this person likes to be the center of it. At least, you know, outsider looking in perspective. I'm trying not to jump to the what is true dimension here. but. Her in-game behavior matches her out-of-game behavior. This person succeeded at making the drama about themselves, but is that actually something that's desirable? Not really. In the end, she took a small situation and blew it up, and it resulted in this group having some lasting resentment. Now, I will say, on the other hand, you do need to make sure to quash these problems early. This person had a lot of problem player behavior, and a lot of this final freakout is a direct result of that past behavior, not necessarily tied to the incident in question. I already covered this person's behavior in the mid-story summary. It's not great. I think you guys get that. There's a bunch of tavern tips sprinkled throughout this, by the way. Wonder if you guys spotted them all. But anyway, and that's it for today's episode of RPG Horror Stories. It's been a while since we've done one this long. Hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please do leave a like. If you want to see more of our content, you can check out our tabletop tavern tip series where we give advice for both DMs and players old and new. New ones coming out this Sunday. It's linked to the cards. And while you're there, subscribe to Crispy's Tavern to get more of our content as it comes out. And finally, for to leave your own stories with thoughts, go down in the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment the meltdown to let me know you made
made it to the end of the video. Hey, by the way, this story came out of my email. If you want a chance to get featured in one of these videos, send your horror story to the email linked in the description down below. But hey, even if you don't have any horror stories, and that's like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Farewell. Thank you.